Good morning and hello. Uh, hello from Goodson Chapel. Um, we welcome you today to our 95th closing convocation. Uh, today we will have Dean Luke Powery, Dean of Duke Chapel, preach. Um, he was voted on to preach for the service by the graduating class. Convocation marks the beginning and the end of the school year. And oddly enough, it's the end of the school year. So let's join today to worship together one final time this year from Goodson Chapel during the academic year. Thank you. with our sin and we wrestle with God only to discover that God's nature and mercies are love and in the knowledge of that great love we come before God to offer our confession merciful God for the things we have done that we regret 
for the things we have failed to do that we regret. Forgive us. For the times we have acted without love. Forgive us. For the times we have reacted without thought. Forgive us. For the, all the times we have withdrawn care. Forgive us. For the times we have failed to forgive. Forgive us. For hurtful words said and helpful words unsaid. For unfinished tasks and unfulfilled hopes. God of all time, forgive us and help us to lay down our burden of regret. And now may the God of all healing and forgiveness draw close to you, cleanse you of all of your sin, and strengthen you to live in the power of the Holy Spirit all of your days. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Amen. As we come to the close of our academic year, symbolized by this closing convocation, I want to begin first by expressing a word of gratitude to our entire community, to the faculty, to the staff, and to the student body for your grace, your patience, your perseverance, your endurance. This has surely been the most unusual year that we've had in higher education in my lifetime as we've navigated and continue to navigate multiple pandemics. COVID-19, racial injustice, mental health issues, economic disruptions. It's been a very complicated year, and we're grateful for all of the ways in which everyone in this community has adapted and grown and learned throughout this year. Thank you. I want to send a special word of congratulations and greeting to our graduating class of 2021. Whatever your degree program, whether you've been in principal residential and remote this year, hybrid, high flex, or in one of our degree programs that are more intentionally hybrid, we celebrate your achievements and your accomplishments this year. It's my honor and privilege every year as Dean to present awards that are given to particular students for their achievements and accomplishments and to announce them at, as a part of this closing convocation. An award for excellence in Bible is selected by the Biblical Division. It recognizes students of exceptional promise as interpreters of the Old and New Testaments. This year's recipients are Jonathan David Manson and Yudai Chiba. The Frederick Beekner Writing Awards we're selected by a faculty and staff committee recognizing excellence in writing of graduating MTS and MDiv students. The award is supported by the Frederick Beekner Foundation. And this year there are two recipients, Brittany Darce Termson Edwards and Micah Christian Riley. The Heitzenrader Award for Excellence in History is selected by Emeritus faculty member Richard Heitzenrader. And this year's recipient is Michael Kojo Larby. The Jameson Jones Preaching Award is selected by preaching faculty in the chaplain's office and is given in memory of former Dean Jameson Jones, who also happens to have been my father. And this year's recipient is Maggie Liston. The Hickman Award for Excellence in Liturgics is selected by worship faculty in the chaplain's office. This year's recipient is Angie K. Hong. The Seminarian Award of the Fellowship of United Methodists in Music and Worship Arts is selected by worship faculty and the chaplain's office. And this year's recipient is again, Angie K. Hong. McMurray Ritchie Awards are selected by a broad group of staff in student and community life, honoring the memory of McMurray Ritchie, a faculty member for many years here. There are three categories. McMurray Ritchie Award in Field Education, this year's recipient is Heidi Sun Schreiber. McMurray Award, Ritchie Award in Mission. This year's recipient is Ben Spangler. And a McMurray Ritchie Award for Student Pastors. And this year's recipient is Ann Stone Benson. In addition, I want to extend congratulations to all graduating students 
who are receiving certificates and concentrations in particular areas of study beyond your degree program. Congratulations, we are proud of all of you. Now let us continue in our service of worship. Please join me in the prayer for illumination. Holy God, by your spirit, tell us what we need to hear and show us what we ought to do, that we may obey Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The Old Testament lesson is from Genesis, the 32nd chapter. The same night, Jacob got up and took his two wives, his two maids, and his 11 children and crossed the ford of the Yabbok. He took them and sent them across the stream and likewise everything that he had. Jacob was left alone and a man wrestled with him until daybreak. When the man saw that he did not prevail against Jacob, he struck him on the hip socket and Jacob's hip was put out of joint as he wrestled with him. Then he said, let me go, for the day is breaking. But Jacob said, I will not let you go unless you bless me. So he said to him, what is your name? And he said, Jacob. Then the man said, you shall no longer be called Jacob, but Israel, for you have striven with God and with humans and have prevailed. Then Jacob asked him, please tell me your name. But he said, why is it that you ask my name? And there he blessed him. So Jacob called the place Peniel saying, for I have seen God face to face and yet my life is preserved. The sun rose up upon him as he passed Penuel limping because of his hip. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The New Testament lesson is from Paul's second letter to the church in Corinth at the fourth chapter. But we have this treasure in clay jars so that it may be made clear that this extraordinary power belongs to God and does not come from us. We are afflicted in every way, but not crushed, perplexed, but not driven to despair, persecuted, but not forsaken, struck down, but not destroyed, always carrying in the body the death of Jesus so that the life of Jesus may also be made visible in our bodies. For while we live, we are always being given up to death for Jesus' sake so that the life of Jesus may be made visible in our mortal flesh. So death is at work in us, but life in you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. 
you may know that the 2018 Pulitzer Prize for Music was given to hip-hop artist Kendrick Lamar for his album entitled Damn. That word may have never been uttered from the Goodson Chapel pulpit before, but it's the name of his album. And as we consider all of the pandemics that we have endured this year and continue to live through, that word may have come across your sanctified lips at least once. Damn. For the seniors here, you might actually be shocked at some of those who are actually graduating and might be thinking that very word and saying to yourself, they actually finished? I know you've said this word or thought it at some point on your Duke Divinity journey. We're all human. I can imagine that you lamarred it from time to time. That exam for which you studied all night long and still failed, you could only articulate a Lamarism. Suffering from Zoom fatigue, class after class, muting and unmuting, starting and stopping the video, keeping up with the chat function, including the mischievous private chat function. I know you, Kendrick Lamarred it. Those four letters could be the lexicon of, of life sometimes at Duke or in Durham or Denver or Des Moines or Delhi or Dubai. It has cross-cultural appeal because it speaks to a universal human experience. Kendrick Lamar, the first non-classical, non-jazz musician to win the Pulitzer, was not trying to present an ode to joy, but an ode to struggle and wrestling in life. Although Brown University professor Trisha Rose, in her book, Black Noise, names the four pillars of hip hop to be graffiti, breakdancing, DJing, and rapping, what's also key in hip hop is the existential nitty gritty texture with its social commentary on poverty and the deindustrialized urban landscape. In other words, hip hop music reveals the truth about human struggle. This same existential, honest beat of the rhythm of life is also found in the Bible. The sun rose upon Jacob as he passed Penuel, limping because of his hip. Jacob was living with a limp, not from an intramural basketball injury, but because he had wrestled with a mysterious man until daybreak. And during that wrestling match, the man struck Jacob on his hip socket, putting his hip out of joint and giving new meaning to the term hip hop. Jacob knew the hip hop life and limped along in the sun. There are so many people throughout history who knew about the hip-hop life and lived with a limp. Not all of them had a physical limp, but they had an issue, an ailment, a struggle, a so-called limitation, yet the sun still rose upon them. Moses was a stutterer, slow of speech and heavy of tongue, but God called him to liberate the children of Israel out of Egypt. Abraham Lincoln was known to suffer from depression, yet is deemed to be one of the greatest presidents ever in this country. Franklin Delano Roosevelt suffered from polio and couldn't stand or walk without crutches, yet was elected four times as president of the United States. Wilma Rudolph was afflicted with polio as a child, but went on to become an accomplished sprinter and the first American woman and African-American woman to win three gold medals in one Olympic Games. Actor James Earl Jones, the voice of Darth Vader and CNN, 
overcame a stutter for which he was so embarrassed that he refused to speak in school, but is now praised for his distinctive voice. This is CNN. Mystery novelist Agatha Christie had a learning disability which prevented her writing from being legible or easily understood, but she dictated all of her novels, stories, and plays and became a best-selling book writer. There are so many living with a limp, hip-hopping along, yet there are strands of Christianity that are very popular, which promote only a positive, pain-free image of following Christ and don't appear to leave room for limps. Rather, they, they hold up uh, implicit metaphorical signs to the masses on TV or the internet that read, no limping allowed. But life's not neat or clean or polished or pristine or painless or struggle-free. There are wrestling matches that will leave you wounded and limping along in life. People are misguided if they only claim a six-pack, muscular, triumphant, dominant, prosperous, rich existence where there's no struggle, no questioning, no wrestling, no suffering, no brokenness, no shortcomings, no imperfections, no Jacob-style hip-hop. Jacob wouldn't buy this, and neither would God. And neither does Lecrae in his song, Welcome to America. Yeah, made in America. Mama told me that I belong here. Had to earn our stripes, had to learn all rights, had to fight for a home here. But I wouldn't know a thing about that. All I know is drugs and rap. I probably could have been some kind of doctor instead of holding guns and crack. I was born in the mainland, great grandpa from a strange land. He was stripped away and given bricks to lay. I guess you could say he a slave hand. But I was made in America. Man, I died for America. I served my time for America, got shot back with the war, got back and ain't nobody give a jack in America. I could have lost my life, boy, I lost my wife. I, I can't even get right in my homeland. Though America ain't feeling me, I went to war for this country, turn around, came home, and you rid of me. When y'all free here saying you don't want to be here. We bled for America to keep y'all fed in America. But what's the point of talking? A lot of y'all don't really even care, America. The struggle is real. National or personal dysfunction is real. Jacob comes from a dysfunctional family, as you know. Of course, none of us know anything about dysfunctional families. I mean, his family makes the Kardashians and Kanye West look normal. Jacob runs away from his brother who wants to kill him and then meets his match at night when he's all alone, showing us that God will catch you when you're all alone because you have to encounter your real self when you are by yourself. The door to God is sometimes only opened in solitude when we are left to wrestle in the dark. Jacob's own name reveals how his whole life was one long struggle. Jacob means deceiver or trickster or supplanter. And when his name is changed to Israel through the wrestling match, that name means struggler with God or God struggles. His fight at night reveals how struggle is a part of life. Jacob wrestled with God and God wrestled with Jacob. Therefore, God even struggles, and God knows hip-hop. But it's only Jacob who's wounded when he's struck in the hip, creating a limp in his life that all can see in the sunlight. The sun rose upon Jacob as he passed Penuel, limping because of his hip. But there's no shame in, in struggling throughout life's journey. 
We all live with limps if we've ever met God. Your limp, your hip hop is not a sign that you don't know God. It could be the very sign that you have wrestled and struggled with God deeply and faithfully. The struggle itself can be the sign of the divine presence, not absence, and be the space where you discover who you really are and who God is. In the limping, in the hip hop, is where you can find God. This limping in the sun openly is an act of faith and courage and vulnerability because by doing so, we show that we aren't Marvel superheroes, no matter how much we loved the movie Black Panther. Life gets out of joint sometimes when we're wrestling, but the limp keeps us honest with ourselves, others, and God. It, it may be the gift that prevents us from taking life for granted or those suffering for granted as we discover our common humanity and mutual suffering. The hip hop life is not a liability, but shows that we have been with God and that God is in the struggle, whatever it might be, because this is a part of the spiritual life and a part of ministry in the church. And this will be a part of your future. If there is no struggle, no wrestling, there may be no blessing either. Remember that the wounds of the crucifixion on the body of Jesus are not erased by the resurrection. In the same way, our limps don't disappear when blessings come. Actually, the blessing of God has its genesis in the struggle. And the truth is that although Jacob has his name changed to Israel, he emerges from his encounter with God, limping because of his hip. This means that the hip hop life is linked to a holy God. This life will hurt sometimes because it's not always easy and smooth. We might come away from God wounded. As Old Testament scholar Walter Brueggemann says of Jacob's situation, his meeting God did not lead as we are wont to imagine to reconciliation, forgiveness, healing. It resulted in a crippling. Our limps may be the mark of God on our lives. As 13th century mystical poet Rumi says, the wound is the place where the light enters you. It might be where you find your calling. As former U.S. poet laureate Natalie Trethaway says of her mother, and how could I not, bathed in the light of her wound, find my calling there? The limp, the wound, the hip-hop life is the window for the sunlight. Limps are normal, not the other way around. After Jacob is struck in the hip, he doesn't let the man go until he's blessed. The blessing from God comes in the struggle, in the wrestling. Jacob is eventually blessed, and he still limps or hip-hops. The limping is not the indication, is not the, the limping is not the, the negation of the blessing. In this story, it's the indication of the blessing. To be in the presence of God doesn't mean all of your pain and struggle disappears. And perhaps there won't be the blessing without the wounding, just as there is no resurrection without the crucifixion. There's a blessing in the wrestling. So know as we close out another academic year that the life of discipleship is about wrestling, not about resting. The life of faith is, is about grappling with your dreams and your demons. Spiritual life is about struggling with your future until you find a a blessing. Life is about meeting God when your life is out of joint like your hip. But just as the sun rose upon Jacob, even while he was limping, the sun will rise upon you and your hip hop life 
as it has with Nick Vujicic. Nick is an Australian born man who was born without limbs, without arms or legs. He has an extremely rare congenital disorder known as Tetra Amelia syndrome. When he was born, the doctor said that he would be a vegetable. He was the first disabled person integrated into the Australian school system. He wrestled with depression, was bullied at school, and when he was 10 years old, he attempted suicide, but finally got to a place to say like the rapper Logic, I don't want to die anymore. His dad always told him that he was a gift, just differently packaged. This 30-something-year-old man has a, a small foot on his left hip, which he refers to as his little chicken drumstick. It helps him keep balance. Nick can type, pick things up between his toes, and even kick a ball. He swims regularly and has gone skydiving. He's a husband and a father without limbs. He leads two organizations, Life Without Limbs and Attitude is Altitude. He speaks to thousands of people to encourage them to not give up. He often says, we sometimes wait for a miracle to happen in life, but the miracle never comes. I, I, I wish many things were different in my life, but knowing I can be a miracle for someone else makes my life worth living. With or without limbs, with limps, like Jacob, like Lamar, even as you hip hop, you can be a miracle for someone else and give hip hope to others. I mean, this is my, my prayer for you as we end this academic year. This is my prayer for all of us in these challenging times that we may be prisoners of hip hope even as we continue to limp along in the sun until the love of Christ meets us in the dark again. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. God of mercy and grace, God of hip hope, it has been a strange, hard year. Even so, we thank you for the precious gift of sharing life and learning together. We thank you for this season of strengthening our minds, our hearts, our eyes and ears, and we pray you will also strengthen us in love, hope, faith, and mercy. Take the knowledge and experience we have gained and turn them into wisdom. Take our discoveries and adventures and transform them into a lifetime spent living truth, pursuing justice, working for peace, and seeking and finding you. Take our regrets, our mistakes, our hurts, and our false starts, and heal them into gentler compassion, greater understanding, and truer concern for those who can only dream of experiencing a day like today. Take our pride and sense of achievement and temper them with humble gratitude for family, teachers, and mentors who have taught us, trained us, and helped us on our way. Take our fears and shape them into wonder at the world you have made, and joy at the companions you have given us within it. Take our community, 
and the wounds it bears and draw us closer to your heart. Mend in us our listening and deepen us in patience and courage. Take our hearts, our hands, our souls and our voices and make our lives a living prayer to you. Amen. Our Dean, Greg Jones, was originally Dean from 1997 to 2010. Uh, he came back in 2018, and uh, he has poured so much of his life into this school, into this place. He was Dean when I was a student. I remember coming to a big meeting and him showing us these grand plans for the new building and for this space. And they broke ground on it the day after I graduated, and here we are. It's, I think most people don't even remember uh, life before the new building and Goodson Chapel. And um, we are so grateful for the time he has spent here. He is on to new adventures as president of Belmont University, and we wanted to send him off uh, with a prayer. So Dean Jones, if you wouldn't mind coming. And then incoming Dean, Edgardo Colon Emmerich and I are going to say a prayer of commissioning. Um, we are so grateful for you and to you for all you have been to this place. Thank you so much. God, who is present with us, we give you thanks for the years of service of our Dean Greg Jones, not only for the last three years, but for his prior deanship. And we praise you for the many things we have appreciated about Greg, his vision and creativity, his intellectual curiosity and entrepreneurial imagination, his disciplined work ethic and youthful enthusiasm, and above all, his love for you and for your people. Oh God, be with Greg and with Susan as they prepare for this new season in Nashville and his appointment as the president of Belmont. May you surround him with people who will support this new vision, who are willing to offer him wisdom and guidance in the season of transition. Lord, we pray too for a community of friends. Bless Belmont University, that they may be a place of both learning and understanding. And God bless and prepare Greg and strengthen him for the work that you have in store, that he may continue to lead with compassion and courage. We pray all these things in Christ's name. Amen.
Thank you for that gift of music. Well, may we, as we have gathered in worship as a hip-hop people, go forth from this place in a spirit of hip-hope, discovering blessing in the wrestling with the God who is, the God who is all in all. And as we go forth, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion and fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all this day and all our days to come. Amen. <laughs>